Greetings, goons, gangsters, and gamers. It is your boy, The Good Tonight. Today, we're taking a look at the True North Concepts Modular Holster Adapter. It's back here, be, uh, behind the holster on the belt. So, this came to my attention last year. I was able to actually pick it up a good amount of time ago and actually run it through its paces, comparing it to the more stock Midride Safari Land holster. Now, the Midride Safari Land is a little more flexible. And uh, people tend to do some uh, unique things with it. I do have the leg strap adapter going on. I originally didn't have it, but after um, after about the third time I went for the draw and the holster moved with me in a not good way, that would have that made me have to reattempt to get the uh, draw going. I didn't go with the leg holster. <clears throat> I generally don't like having something extra, but leaving this one relatively light, it's uh, just enough. It's out of the way. I think I, I think I finally got the concept down now. There's a lot to look at here. Um, I'm going to be moving the camera down a wee bit. And uh, yeah, so what we're looking at here is instead of the freaking um, the plastic sort of the, what is it, uh, injection molded plastic they got going on with Safari Land. This one, <coughs> oh, excuse me, actually uses it was an aircraft grade aluminum sort of thing going on. So let's go ahead. I'm going to actually pop this guy out, make sure he's good. Set him aside, because he's not going to be important. He's just going to be extra weight along with this video, but important nonetheless. Now we're going to pop this guy free. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. So as you can see, here we got a bit of the front end going on. There's your True North Concepts thing. Now I've got this going through the uh, tier, where's the freaking gunfighter belt thing going on here. So with uh, belts, especially the two parts that use the uh, half-sized molly sort of setup, you can actually run these two uh, little uh, bolt looking things right through there mount them down there's some uh, rubber spacers and stuff in between you lock that down nice and tight and you've got your holster more or less set up now this is very effective with um, the module was it the little uh, QLS system because it gives you a little bit of extra space that gives you a bit of space between the uh, holster and everything now with the QLS these screw heads I do find still uh, bump into the um, the holster end of the mount so when you're moving this in and out you're going to be bumping into those just a little bit it's not a big deal and you can generally bend it out of the way to an extent but as you can see there is that little minor impact going on so it is something to be cognizant of when taking your holster on and off so let's take a look here as you can see you've got your normal safari land little three pin sort of setup on the opposing end here you can see there is actually a lot of room to maneuver and finagle this to get just the right um, sort of setup you're looking for if you want the holster canted forward, backwards, whatever your natural draw is based on your arm length and all those uh, genetic factors. Now, one of the, um, so before we get onto that, let's, uh, you got the four bolts here, so let's see about these ends. If you need to take this off, the easiest way I found is this is set up to work with a lot of different belts, but the way I found to work with the um, tier belt and the belt similar to this is you pop off the top two screws, take out the rubber washer, keep an eye on those little backings because that's what holds the screw in place, don't lose those, and you just slide it out from the bottom. So you can move all your pouches around, do all that stuff, slide it back through, these generally don't move, lock everything back in place. <coughs> ah, excuse me, easy day, I need to drink more water. And um, yeah, so there's lots of spaces and everything to work through here. There is the leg adapter. Originally I didn't have the leg adapter, and it does have four parts. You got it set up the way I got it here. You can flip it upside down so it's a bit higher. You can mount it up here, dead facing down or facing up. And yeah, I've actually got this set to the lowest setting. It's, um, I think it's like a hair lower than the normal middle setup, but it's out of the way and nice and cozy. So this is where I've also got a pro tip going on. As you will see, I do not have the leg mount set up in the traditional setup. What do I mean? Well, you got these three holes and four prongs. And I got to do an example of this one. Where did I put my, oh yeah, it's in the dump pouch. So this is a pro tip. This is a pro tip I've got for you guys if you're looking to get into those. So generally, this is gonna be our, this 550 cord is gonna be our leg strap. So generally when you're using the Safari Land, you got just the little um, space in between. When you mount the brackets to, through it holds this in place. This isn't moving or going anywhere. Your buckle stays stationary. Now this one, you've got three holes. So we're gonna have the holes represented by my fingers, although these don't have like a top or anything. So what you generally do is you weave it through one end, you weave it back through the other end. It comes back through this way. And that's how all the pictures, all the demonstrations, everything has it set up. So of course, there's no super crazy grip thing going on with the leg mount. So when you move it back and forth, 
the buckle and everything moves with it. If you're mounting your freaking um, shot timer on there, like all the cool kids do, that means your shot timer is going to be moving around with the buckle. So the pro tip I have for you guys is what I particularly did is I weaved in through the middle, then um, where is it? Went through the middle, went out the uh, side, and um, well, how the frick. It makes a lot more sense than I was doing it, but that one in through, um, he comes out this way, comes back on um, around and uh, through the, how the hell? Yeah, it goes through, that one through there, then back out. Yeah, so how I got mine set up is more akin to this sort of thing you got going on here. So what that does is sort of like a climbing carabiner, a little H mount thing, is you get an opposing pool from the uh, direction it's going. So with a little bit of conceited effort, you can maneuver this over here, this down through here, that back around there, and you can slide your buckle around. But generally when you got the leg strap going on, your buckle is going to stay in the same place. That uh, opposing directional pull for both sides keeps it effectively from moving around freely. So it's not what they, it's not what they teach you to do, but as you can see, yeah, there it is. There's the main part on the back and there it is going through the, uh, going through the center of both ends. So yeah, it keeps the buckle from moving freely on its own when it's under pressure and everything. Cause I, uh, I could just be the Marine Corps having everything nice and tight and strapped down, but that keeps the buckle up towards the front where I have easy access to it and it's not sliding around the inside of my leg to the back and I'm gonna have to search for it if I need to detach it. And reattaching it also makes it a lot easier. So that is the big pro tip I have for everyone. So if you already got one of these, now you know a cool way to fix any of that buckle sway. If it bothers you nearly as much as it bothers my more OCD brain. So, yeah, so that's the, um, oh no, I had that freaking clamped all funky. Oh no, my personal retention lanyard. How will I ride in the helicopters that I, that I don't own without you? <laughs> As yeah, that guy set back up. So, of course, when you want this back up there, shabam. And of course, without the buckle moving on me, I can easily pull this back through and shabam. So yeah, that's what it looks like. I've had seen a few, also a bit, a bit of that pro tip, that little bit of material covering the back end keeps it from digging into your leg. Not a lot, but just a little bit of padding. And I've noticed it's been significantly more comfortable to wear ever since. So we take our holster. Holster does the QLS thing relatively normal. Watch out for that little bump, make sure it gets all the way through. Mount up handgun of your choice, or whatever works with the holster, and bam, you are G2G. And yeah, this does come down a little bit, it gives a nice little space to maneuver around, but that little pro tip, it will change the comfort entirely of your modular holster adapter. Like the whole thing is just significantly better in and out and all around, so. The Safari Line did have a little bit of a bend to it, and the fact that the uh, slots were pre-cut and couldn't be adjusted, whereas these ones sort of can, gives you a lot more options so you can get your holster exactly where you need it. And that's gonna go, it's gonna go a ways to improving your draw speed and shoot and all that stuff. And uh, of course, always tight silkies, tighter groupings, so. That's pretty much the entire video. Hopefully that's been somewhat insightful. If you were thinking about getting one, I can definitely tell you. In my experience, it's been a huge plus. I have heard people say that they um, they couldn't get it to work for them. I think getting that a uh, leg strap set up more in the way I do mine might help out a few people. And that's kind of the entire point of the channel is helping you guys out. So hopefully that's been some good information. Hope you appreciate, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, do your, uh, do what you gotta do. And um, cheers, stay chivalrous, and I will catch you preferably on the range, but you know, wherever. Home on the range, as they say. Peace out, everyone. See you next time.